Hi, and welcome to the next in a series of live webinars where we explore how you can use Minecraft in education. My name is Simon Johnson. I'm a former ICT and computing teacher and I have several years experience working in education. I'm also a Minecraft global mentor. In this session, we'll explore some of the basic controls. Uh, we'll also learn how to place and break blocks in Minecraft in order to build. And we'll also discover how to leverage the power of Minecraft with little or no prior experience. For those who missed the previous sessions, I thought I'd just do a quick recap on what is Minecraft. So, what is Minecraft? We are born learners. We crave new challenges and new adventures. Our creativity is limitless. And when we learn through play, amazing, often unexpected things happen. In schools and in homes around the world, students are using Minecraft to build cities, explore coral reefs, to create with code, run science experiments, and to tell fantastic stories. Minecraft has always been about exploration and discovery, bringing together a global community of co-creators. Now, the next generation of engineers, biologists, and designers are inspiring us with their creations. Minecraft Education Edition empowers learners to solve problems they care about, to connect in new ways far beyond the classroom, and to build a better world through the power of play. So Minecraft is a sandbox game. Um, the best analogy I can use is imagine you have a giant sand pit where your raw materials are grains of sand. Now, using those grains of sand uh, and some water, you can build a simple sand turret, um, a sand castle, or a life-size replica of a unicorn. The only limit is your imagination. In Minecraft, your raw materials are blocks. Each block um, can be made of brick or stone or dirt, um, but just like the grains of sand, um, you can create anything you wish. So you can create a simple rudimentary shelter to shelter from the elements. You can create a nice um, lakeside log cabin, or you can create a scale replica of Hogwarts. Again, the only limit is your imagination. So why Minecraft and why Minecraft Education Edition? So Minecraft uh, has been written from the ground up with an education focus. So the education version contains specific education features, such as the ability to make notes using the um, portfolio and export those to OneNote. Um, you have uh, secure login, safeguarding features, so only children on the same tenancy that have a code can connect to each other's worlds. Um, you have classroom settings so the teacher can control the class within Minecraft uh, and also multi-platform support. Before I start, I thought I'd share with you some um, key vocabulary that I'm going to be using in this webinar and that you might be using in your classroom when using Minecraft. So the first one is blocks. So each block in Minecraft is one meter cube. So one meter by one meter by one meter. This becomes more valuable and more important when we start to explore using Minecraft for um, numeracy. You also have your two main players, Alex and Steve. But in addition to this, you also have a selection of free costumes or skins um, unique to the education version that you can access within the game. And we'll look at that in a moment. Probably the most natural uh, and intuitive way to play Minecraft is survival mode. So um, my analogy is uh, it's like Bear Grylls meets Lego meets um, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, imagine that you're on a desert island and you have nothing other than the natural resources around you. and You've got to survive a night. Uh, that's essentially Minecraft. Another version uh, of Minecraft is creative mode. Um, this removes all the survival aspects uh, and we'll explore how you can use creative mode a little bit in this webinar uh, and we'll explore it more in the next webinar too. 
You also have mobs in Minecraft. So mob is short for mobile, and this refers to the moving game entities within the game. So you have different um, types of mobs. So you have friendly mobs like pigs um, and uh, goats and sheep, and then you have hostile mobs. Probably the most um, famous or infamous one is the creeper the reason why that is is because when a creeper gets close to its target it explodes so imagine you just opened your door to your house that you just spent hours building and the creeper just turns up and the last thing you want it to do is explode and destroy all your hard work so I thought I'd start by exploring how you get started in Minecraft and some of the features um, I'll also throughout this webinar uh, when I explain some of the features and uh, just talk a little bit how you can use these in an educational context. Um, so let's start with how you get started. So when you're in Minecraft um, you have a number of um, features, play, settings. The first thing I would ask you to concentrate on is your character. So when the children open up Minecraft for the first time, the first thing they can do before they start to play is select their character. It gives them ownership of the game. So if I click on the coat hanger, you see you have my main two players, uh, Alex and Steve. Um, you can see my current costume or skin is an astronaut. Uh, and if I scroll down, I can see there's lots of different packs that I can choose from. Um, so if I click on the everyday heroes and press plus, so I've got police officer, astronaut, uh, engineers, uh, lawyers, um, chef. So you'll probably find that, uh, depending on the project you're doing, there might be appropriate skin for that, whether you're looking at Egyptians, Romans, Vikings. Uh, it's a good idea to get the students to choose their character first. The other nice thing about this is um, when you're supporting literacy, um, you can ask the children to uh, write about the character they've selected. So why did they choose the astronaut? Uh, has this astronaut got a backstory or history? Uh, so it's a great way to encourage creative writing. So once you started, you can click on play. Um, here you get access to the main features. So you have uh, my worlds. So this gives you access to uh, all the worlds you've created so far. Uh, I can create a new world. I can join an existing world. We explore more about collaborative play later on this series of webinars. You can also import existing worlds that we shared with you. Um, I would start with the library. So in here, you have some subject kits, um, monthly build challenges, starter worlds, if I click on the subject kits, here you have uh, access to a plethora of uh, lessons created by teachers for teachers across a number of subjects. So we have science, maths, computer science, we also have social and emotional, which is really important. So if I were to click on science, for example, you can see it's uh, split up into chemistry, biology and biodiversity. Let's have a look at the chemistry lessons. So I can look at uh, there's a chemistry tutorial that explores the different um, chemistry features uh, specific to Minecraft Education Edition. Uh, and then if I were to click on a lesson, let's look at the element scavenger hunt. I can then create a world using that template. And I've also got the resources um, and uh, learn objectives built into the game. So that's a great starting point. You also have monthly build challenges. Um, I'll discuss build challenges and competitions later in the webinar series. You also have starter worlds. This is quite important. So you have build plates and biomes. So build plates are pre-existing templates with content already in. So this is starter town with a, uh, a city. Um, this is really nice, um, especially if you're exploring um, sustainability and sustainable cities. Um, you also have a flat world. I like flat worlds when we start building uh, for the first time because it takes out all the mountains and rivers so uh, there's less distraction and the students don't end up falling or, get, or getting lost. And then also biomes. So just like in the real world, Minecraft have different biomes. So you'll have uh, a desert biome, forest biome, ice plains. Now this becomes useful if, let's say for example, you want to do a project next term uh, with the students on ancient Egypt. You want them to build scale models of the pyramids. Now you won't want to go to um, a world and then have to fly around looking for uh, a decent uh, desert for them to build in. You can just quickly find the biome they need for your lesson and it gives you the ready-made template. So it's really, really useful. When you get started, the first section that I would ask you to look at is how to play. So inside here, you have some tutorials. So you've got uh, start here for keyboard, start here for touch. Um, 
students that have used Minecraft before, um, I tend, they find to have used it on either the pocket edition, so um, a mobile device, such as a phone or tablet, uh, or the console editions so using game controller. Um, so using the mouse and keyboard can be really alien to them. It's a good starting point. Um, but if you do have touchscreen devices, you can use the pocket edition controls, which is really, really useful. So speaking of controls, controls in Minecraft are fairly simple. Um, you use the mouse to look around um, and I'll look at interactions in a moment. Um, and your controls for movement are W to go forward, A left, D right, S back. You got uh, space to jump. So as I said, uh, I made a mistake early on in using Minecraft um, and assuming that the students, uh, because they play Minecraft to be experts, uh, and then they got lost in the controls because they never used the PC version. So I'll show you again from the main menu, you click on play, go to view library, go to how to play, and I would start as a teacher and with all the students, start here with the keyboard controls. Um, so the three key ones we're going to explore today, and I recommend exploring yourselves, are movement, play some break, and interact. So if I click on um, movement, and I choose create world. Now the nice thing um, I find about these tutorials is that it removes any barriers to learning by only focusing on the key uh, objectives within this game. So in this one, it's movement. Uh, there's an area of um, education science called cognitive um, theory um, and cognitive load theory, where students, if they're given too much information, um, they'll struggle um, with uh, certain activities, um, especially with their short term memory. So this only focuses on what the students need to achieve, and removes all those uh, extra components. So here um, we're focusing on um, movement. So it says point your cursor at the golden block. So we use the mouse um, to um, look around and it says point at the other block. So it uses a bit of repetition to um, allow the students to master these. And it says turn around. So I use my mouse again, just to turn around, point my cursor at the block and it says turn back again. And then it says use W to go forward. So it's W forward, A to go left, D to go right. And again, it gives them opportunity to master those with this um, maze. Amazing. Sorry about that pun. That's the last time I'll do that. So follow the arrows all the way to the end. And it has one more thing to introduce and that's um, jump. So we use forward and space bar to jump. And then when we reach the end, we usually have some fireworks uh, and we're ready to move on to the next task. So as I said, it's really important that um, before you start, you have the student explore the controls within the game, and it's good for yourself um, to get used to as well. Once you master the main controls of movement, um, the next challenge is to master placing and destroying blocks. So to destroy a block, you hold the left mouse button, and to place a block, you press the right mouse button. So let's explore this in Minecraft. So again, if we go back to our main menu, you go to library, how to play, start here, keyboard, and we're going to choose tutorial two, play some break and create world. So first thing we need to do is break the blue block with our hands. If you move up to the blue block, notice I have a crosshair. Uh, so I need to point the crosshair at the block that I want to interact with and to break the block I just hold down the left button, keep it held down and there we go. So it says break through the orange. So again, hold down the left mouse button and I make myself a door like so. Notice now I have an axe in my hand. So um, as you can imagine, as the blocks get harder and harder, as we get all the way up to brick and stone, yeah, it's going to be difficult to punch your way through. Um, so uh, you can craft or use uh, certain items. So in this case, we're using a wooden axe to speed things up. So again, all I do is whilst the axe is in my hand, hold down the left mouse button. 
uh, now we get to brick. So a wooden axe is not going to do um, um, me much good. So I've now got a stone pickaxe. So again, hold down the left mouse button, like so. And activity completed. Um, and then to place an object, all we do is, um, again, use our crosshair to identify the block that we want to place that item on. And we can right click to place. So let's plant some nice flowers. Then notice at the bottom, I have uh, a toolbar uh, or a heads up display. So at the top, you have heart. So this is your, um, your uh, damage. You also have a hunger level. So in survival, you will need to eat. The nice thing is you can choose to be either vegetarian or a meat eater or both. Uh, and then underneath you have your inventory. So this is kind of like your pockets, uh, quick access pockets. Um, and then to access the different items, you can either use the scroll wheel, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, to scroll between the different blocks, or you can press the number on the keyboard which represents each block. So number one, number first, number two is the blue orchid, number three is allium, and number four is azure blue a. Um, I think that's right, pronounced. I said two, and then remember right click to place, and three, right click to place, and there's my wonderful garden. And it's as simple as that. So there you have place and break. Now this is pivotal to um, using Minecraft and we'll explore this later uh, when we uh, introduce creative mode. So once you've mastered movement and you're able to place and break blocks, the final thing you need to master is interaction. So there's several things you can interact with in Minecraft from chests, signs, um, um, switches, buttons, and also NPCs. And we'll talk about NPCs shortly. So again, if we go to Minecraft and go to our library and go to our how to play and keyboard, you notice uh, the third tutorial is interaction. So let's click on it and create world. Okay, so again, um, it gives us some instructions. It says right click the button continue to continue. So if I right click on the button on the gold block, there we go. And again, like previous tutorials, um, it asks the students to repeat this to master those skills. Which reminds me of a game I used to play as a child. Uh, there we go, like so and then keep moving forward. Um, you also, as well as buttons, you have switches. Now, switches can operate lights um, or open doors, like so. so again, right click. And now switches can be toggled on or off just by right clicking on them. Um, some items don't require a switch, so wooden doors, you can just right click to open and close. And notice you have different types of doors for different situations. And then some doors, such as iron doors, require a switch or button to operate. So again, you can toggle the switch on or off by right clicking. We have some gates, um, a trap door. Again, anything that's iron um, needs to be switched on or off with a switch or button. We have chests. So this is where students can store items. Uh, I did a project once um, on sustainability where and recycling, upcycling. Because um, in Minecraft, um, here um, you have your inventory, your pocket. This is kind of your backpack, uh, but these will quickly fill up. So we'd have students working on um, a small area, um, digging and finding natural resources. Uh, but then eventually what will happen is they'll run out. So the children just tend to just chuck out anything they don't want. Um, so I said, rather than do that, create some boxes, some chests um, and label them uh, metal, glass, uh, plastics, and then anything you don't want, rather than throw it away, place it in a block, uh, in a chest, and then other students can upcycle or recycle those items. Um, I also had a colleague as well that um, used uh, chess for literacy. So you'd have the children um, create a story in Minecraft, record that in their um, book and quill. They then sign the book and place the book inside the chest. And then the students would randomly pick a book and read the story. Really, really nice idea.
And the final thing you can interact with is NPCs. So NPCs or non-player characters are unique to Minecraft. Um, they can uh, provide information. So imagine you've just arrived at the pyramids of Giza. You can have a tour guide that talks about how the River Nile is important to ancient Egyptian culture. You can also um, um, have a conversation. You can also provide links. So these buttons can take you to a uh, useful website um, or shared OneNote. And you've also got built in the Immersive Reader. And those that um, are familiar with Immersive Reader, uh, you may have used it with uh, OneNote Online or um, with Word Online. We know it's a powerful accessibility tool. If you've never used it before, um, I'll just go through the tips. Uh, a child can read aloud what's on the screen. Hello, I'm an NPC. A non-player character. Uh, they can also um, change the font and use colored overlays. They can identify um, parts of the speech like verbs and nouns. And they can also translate. So if I wanted to, I could translate this whole um, passage into French. Bonjour. Je suis un PNJ. Un personnage non joueur qui peut fournir des dialogues. So, a very powerful accessibility tool that's built into Minecraft already. And that's pretty much everything that you can uh, interact with in Minecraft. So, I think I asked my teachers what's the quick, quickest, and easiest way to get started in Minecraft? Easy win. I find that survivor mode is probably the easiest um, route into get into Minecraft. Now, um, I often say that how can you ask a child to write about something they've never experienced because minecraft is a game it fully immerses them within the environment so they can explore the world in 3d and they can also hear everything that's around them so it gives them something to write about so let's have a look at survivor mode and how you can use it in a literacy context so from minecraft um, if i go back to the main menu i click on play uh, this time I'm going to click on create new. I'm going to choose new. We'll talk about templates uh, later on in the series. But I click on new. Uh, give my world a name. So I'll call this my first world. This is useful um, because once you start to have lots and lots of worlds, uh, it's easy to um, find um, the world you're looking for. So my first world. And I'm going to leave at survival. Um, the only other feature you might want to change is the difficulty. So peaceful, um, any players in the game are not going to come to any harm. You're not going to have any hostile mobs. Um, for literacy activity, I would set this to easy. I'll talk about this um, in a moment. So I've given my world a name, selected survival mode, chose uh, easy difficulty, and that's it. That's all you have to do. I then click on play, and away we go. So in survival mode, you have to build. Uh, I just happen to be up in the trees. This sometimes does happen. So um, I have to build in order to survive. So you can see um, there's some um, friendly mobs. And I can use the skills I've learned so far to build. So um, I'm going to left mouse click to dig and break some blocks and notice um, when you break a block, it turns into a smaller block. If I walk over the top of that block, it adds it to my inventory or to my pocket. Like so. And then when I have enough blocks, um, I can start to build my shelter because at some point soon, it's going to go dark. Uh, I also need to um, shelter from the environment, like the weather. Uh, and also I need to um, find somewhere to hide because um, as soon as it gets dark, those hostile mobs like the creeper are going to um, arrive. Now, the great thing about Minecraft is and sandbox games is there are no rules. So I could build myself um, a house quickly, rudimentary shelter out of dirt like so. Or I could easily, just as easily, I could find um, a mountain like here and I could just dig a hole into the mountain and hide in there um, until it's safe so again um, 
the children have a choice uh, on what to do and there's no right or wrong answer uh, the great thing about games as well is i've talked about in the past um, that it helps build resilience because it creates an environment where the children are safe to fail so they know that if something happens and they die it's fine because they can start again and they can improve their strategy to try to not die again next time it also encourages problem solving so uh, i've built my house and all of a sudden i can't get my roof on so you need to think about how do i get a roof on so there's several ways you can do this some children realize they can just um, use lower levels to place or you could just build a set of steps on the outside so you can use that as a scaffold to until you finished your building like so and then you can remove that scaffold once you've finished now i mentioned in minecraft that you also have environmental features such as um, uh, weather so i'm going to quickly just change my settings um, I've turned the sound down on this just simply because um, if I have Minecraft running in the background whilst doing a webinar, all you'll hear is uh, pigs and sheep and uh, the Minecraft music. So I'm just going to go to audio to demonstrate this. So I'm going to turn up my sound. There we go. And this is important because imagine um, you've asked the children to go into Minecraft, into survival mode, uh, to build their shelter. And then all of a sudden it starts to rain now i'm going to use a code to do this um, but and i'll talk about these um, later on in the series but don't worry about this now but this is just a quick way to demonstrate so i'm going to say well change the weather i'm going to change it to rain so the children start to get wet and they can hear the rain as well because it's fully immersive but also occasionally um, we get a harsher weather, so let's have thunder. Also, the weather um, is affected by um, biomes, so if you're in a snowy tundra, instead of um, if raining, it will actually snow. So let's uh, do thunder. So I'll rain a bit harder, it'll go dark. Uh, you'll uh, occasionally see uh, a flash of lightning. Uh, and you'll hear the thunder uh, rumble in the background. Uh, but at the moment it's still quite safe because it's still day. So I've still got time to able to finish my build. But at some point it's going to go dark. So I'm just going to change the time. And set it to night. So uh, a day in Minecraft is approximately 20 minutes. So all of a sudden it's gone dark. Uh, oh, there's some spiders over there. Uh, I can hear some noises, some monsters in the background. So I'm starting to panic. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a skeleton with a bow and arrow, so I need to finish my build. And then you can stop the children. And you can have them write about the experience. So you could get them to write a bio about the character they selected at the start of the game. Uh, get them to uh, write about how they felt um, when all of a sudden it went dark and they hadn't finished the build and the, the, the spiders and the skeletons are creeping up on them. Um, or just write about the experience, what they did and how they managed to solve certain problems they came across. So that's a really quick and easy win. Another way to use Minecraft is in creative mode. So creative mode removes all the survival aspects. Um, I'm going to talk about creative mode in more detail in the next webinar, but um, I thought I'd use this opportunity to just do a brief introduction. The reason why I like creative mode is um, students have access to all the blocks in Minecraft um, and um, they can also fly as well and they're not going to be harmed by any uh, mobs or by falling. So it's great for creating um, models. So it could be a scale model. Um, it could be a recreation of the pyramids of Giza. Or in this example, uh, it could be um, a reenactment of uh, World War One and create the trenches. One thing I notice when using creative mode um, is that the students will go the extra mile to make their world perfect. So this is an example um, of uh, World War Trenches, a project I ran with um, a year six group. Um, and the first thing I noticed is that um, 
it introduces problem solving because there is no barbed wire block in um, Minecraft, but the children quickly realized that they could represent barbed wire using cobwebs. Um, I also mentioned also that their, the students will go the extra mile uh, with their research to make it look perfect. And I remember walking around the classroom in this instance, and in the corner of my eye, I could see this one child was um, filling his trench full of water. So I thought he was um, being silly and uh, messing around. I was about to tell this child off when I said, no, sir, I read this on the internet. And without any prompts from me, they went onto the internet, did some research and found out that the Allies uh, got to the battlefield after the Germans. So they had the lower shallow ground, which meant their trenches were really shallow. And he'd researched and found out that when it rained, it would often fill the trenches up to waist height. And that's what he's trying to represent. So let's have a quick look at creative mode. So again, from the main menu, you click on play, click on create and new. And just as before, we give our world a name, so uh, my second world, although I'm sure you can be more creative than that. But this time we're going to change the uh, game mode to creative. It doesn't really matter in creative um, about the difficulty because you're not going to be harmed, but I'm going to leave it as peaceful. And again, all I do is press play. So this time, notice there is no hunger bar um, and there's no um, life bar. Um, and also this time, if I left click on a block, it destroys it automatically. So I don't have to um, hold the left button. Also, if I want to um, place a block, if I press the letter E, uh, this gives me access to my inventory. And notice I now have access to every single block in Minecraft. So. Uh, let's say I wanted to create a wall. Um, I could find the um, brick block. And you can search for items as well. There we go, a brick wall. Like so. And I can place my blocks like so. And if I make a mistake, uh, I don't have to wait forever holding down my button or use special tools. I just press the left mouse button once. Um, I can also fly as well. So if I press space to jump and do that twice in succession, I can fly. So uh, I can see over here there's some sand. So let's have a go at creating a pyramid. Imagine this is an ancient Egyptian project. So I can go to E to bring up my inventory. Um, I'm going to search for sand. So I've got sand blocks or so got smooth sandstone or oh, I think smooth sandstone will look good um, in a pyramid and remember I mm. use um, my uh, number pad uh, one two three four or my scroll wheel to select my block and then I can start building my ancient Egyptian pyramid this is going to be a very small pyramid Yep, and it's as simple as that. So that is creative mode. And I said we'll explore creative mode in a bit more detail in their subsequent sessions. So if you found this useful uh, and you want to learn more, first thing you can do is you can go to the official Minecraft website, which is education.minecraft.net. Uh, if you use social media, particularly Twitter, you can also reach out to the team at PlaycraftLearn. Um, also, if you like this webinar and you want to see some more in our series, if you go to the ak.ms for just Minecraft EDU UK activities, uh, we'll give you a list of all the webinars um, that we've produced. And don't worry, all the links will also be available in the YouTube playlist. If you want to get certified um, and learn more about Minecraft Education Edition, particularly how you can use it in the classroom, um, you can also sign up for the Minecraft Teacher Academy. And we've also um, set up a new UK community. So here you have access to education resources. Uh, you'll be the first to hear about um, latest updates build challenges and any new competitions. And you can also get support from other educators and experts, including Minecraft Global um, Mentors. And that's aka.ms for just Minecraft EDU 
UK community. And finally, if you enjoyed this webinar, um, please check out the other ones in our series and please also share this with your, any colleagues that you think might be interested. So thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this session and we look forward to seeing you on our subsequent uh, Minecraft education webinars.